Hey all, I'm Paul Rees, an engineer with the Developer Relations team on Google ML, and this is the ML on Raspberry Pi with MediaPipe series, where you will learn about the basics of machine learning, along with how you can use Google's newest on-device machine learning tool, MediaPipe, to add useful features to your own Raspberry Pi apps. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite MediaPipe tasks, Face Landmarker. Like other tasks that you've seen in this series, Face Landmarker is made up of multiple models to get to the end result. The first model will attempt to detect if a face even exists within the image that's being evaluated. If the face does exist, then a second model will run that attempts to find 478 unique landmarks on that face. Finally, a third model will look over that collection of landmarks to try to figure out what sorts of facial expressions that person is making, along with other attributes, like eyes closed, smiling, or raised brows, amongst about 50 other things. And despite the number of steps involved, MediaPipe Task wraps this all up for you in a simple image in, data out format, so you can add this really cool feature set to your Raspberry Pi programs without needing to worry a lot about the underlying details. One important thing to know about this is that this performs facial detection and classification, but not recognition. You can use this task to identify different high-level features of face, but it's not designed to connect one face to any particular person. With that in mind, let's go ahead and see how you can get started with this. Similar to the other videos, I'm only going to focus on the important parts of implementing face landmarking with MediaPipe during this video, but you can find an entire working example project on GitHub, which I'll link to in the video description. On top of the base project on GitHub, I've put together my own small demo specifically for face landmarks on the Raspberry Pi. And while it isn't something that I've made available online, definitely let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more projects like this for content. In this demo, I've cut out a simple set of flowers on a laser cutter, then painted the individual pieces before gluing them together. From there, I've added a small LED ring to one of the flowers that will change colors based on the different facial expressions seen by the Raspberry Pi camera. While this isn't something too fancy, it was something that I had fun with, so I'm hoping you all enjoy it too. If this is something you would like to see more of for our video series, or if there are any other particular kinds of projects you would like to see as either a video or a written guide, definitely let us know in the comments below, because I do look at those after these videos have been published to see what questions people have, what I can do to improve in the future, and to see what sorts of content people really enjoy the most. Like our other examples, the very first thing you need to do is make sure you are running a 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS, as well as have a camera installed. Either the Ribbon Pi camera or a standard USB camera will work here. After that, you will need the MediaPipe Python dependency installed on your device. You will also need to make sure that you have an appropriate model stored on your device. There's a variety of ways you can do this, including using the wget command from the terminal that you can see here on the screen to get a stock model that has been tested already. Since I'm not using a custom model for this example, I'll use this exact command to retrieve an existing and tested model to place it in the same directory as my Python script. Getting into the actual Python program, you have a few necessary imports for using MediaPipe task. Plus, I've created a few objects for drawing the face. I'm not showing it here, but our official sample does bring in OpenCV for accessing the camera on the device. You will also need to initialize the face landmark detector with an initial set of configuration option objects, like you can see here. There's a lot going on, so let's take a look at this in smaller sections. The first line is the base options object that wraps some of the standard things available in every task, like the path to your model. Then the second object is the set of options that are specific to the face landmarker and it wraps the base options object. The running mode tells MediaPipe tasks what sort of data flow it should expect. For this example, I'm using a constant stream of camera frames where each will be sent to the detector, but other modes include a static image or video file that gets processed and the results are returned for each image or frame. The number of faces option, as you can probably guess, is used to set the max number of faces that the task should attempt to detect and label in an image or frame. Then these next three values are kind of interesting. You're able to use them to set the minimum confidence required to detect a face or how confident the first model is that a face is still within the frame before moving on to doing inference with those following two models. The reason this is here is that it's much faster to process if a face is in a frame or not, so setting specific requirements for the first model step can really increase the speed of your overall landmarking inference. Along those same lines, if you don't need to know about blend shapes or the model that tries to determine facial gestures from the landmarks that I've already talked about, 
then you can simply skip that step and only get landmarks. This gives you less information, but it does work faster. So it really comes down to what you need for your project. And this final options is the result callback. Because the camera live stream will work asynchronously, you will need a callback function for receiving the results once they've been processed. So you can associate it with the face landmarker task here. If you're using the image or video running mode, then you can completely skip this part. After all of that, you can create the landmarker object that you'll use in your app to do all of the machine learning inference. Now that you've read in a camera frame and are ready to run detection on it, you can convert the image into a media pipe image object, which itself expects an image formatted for red, green, and blue to match the underlying TensorFlow light models, and then call detect async from the landmarker object. Finally, you'll receive the results in the callback that you associated with the options object earlier. In my example project, I'm taking those results, looping through the blend shape items, and changing the color on this LED ring to match my expressions. You can see that the LEDs turn yellow when I raise my eyebrows, red when I open my mouth, and make a rainbow pattern when I'm smiling. Along with all of that, to help you get the most out of this task, it's really useful to understand what this result object looks like. It contains a list of 478 face landmarks that each have their own X, Y, and Z coordinates based on the input image. The X and Y coordinates are normalized from 0.0, .0 .0 to 1.0 and match up to each landmark's point in the original inference image. Plus the Z axis represents the landmark's depth in relation to the center point on the face, with smaller values being closer to the camera while scaling the Z axis to roughly the same scale as the X axis. This is also where you'll find the blend shapes values that I'm using for changing the flower LED colors, with each value in this result array representing the blend shape and its confidence score. The last thing this result object will contain is a set of matrices that you can use for transforming faces, which is useful if you want to do any UI effects, like applying an augmented reality filter to the user. And finally, because it's definitely a nice to have, there are also some drawing utilities put together to specifically help you draw face components in your apps. While this code snippet is drawing the face mesh tessellation, or the small lines between the landmarks, we also support predefined connectors for things like the outlining oval on the face and lips, the eyes, irises, and brows, and a superset of eyes, eyebrows, lips, and the face oval that we just call contours. And that's about it for the face landmarker task. We're excited to see all the cool things you make with MediaPipe on the Raspberry Pi though I am particularly because I really love the IoT space. So let us know in the comments what you've made or what you want to make, and I'll see you next time. <music>